You should remember that today is Holy Face Sunday, of the different occasions in the course of the year that honor the Holy Face of our Lord, very ancient, going back many, many centuries. Today is the chief of them. The stational church in Rome is at St. Peter's Basilica, and today the uh, Veronica's Veil was actually placed for the veneration of the faithful. That's our particular devotion here at this church. So let us commend to the Holy Face the good intentions that we have made to keep a good and a devout Lent, and for our Lord and his Holy Face to bless us for our next 30 years here. In the Gospel, St. Luke writes, And they understood none of these things, and this word was hid from them, and they understood not the things that were said. The blind man pleads, Lord, that I may see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Three years, day and night. Not the odd sermon you might catch every eight days. Supplemented, of course, by articles, by bulletins, by internet offerings, and even YouTube films now. The twelve were three years in the presence of our Savior. They had just seen or heard about it from the other three, the chosen ones, the astounding nuclear miracle of the Son, the transformation of Christ in his divinity, the light the voice, the words of God the Father. This is my son. Hear ye him. And yet, they did not. St. Luke is quite clear on the subject. He repeats himself. They understood not the words that were said to them. They understood not why they were heading now up to Jerusalem with Jesus, why it was so that his sacred face could be spat upon, his body scourged, their master mocked, and then put to death. He would rise again the third day. They understood not the twelve. So, If you have a hard time, sometimes, understanding the faith, the demands of the faith upon your life, you have this consolation. You are in good company. We priests got to talking, all of us were together uh, this past week, one night at dinner. We got to talking about how it is that so many of our children grow up and grow away. Of course, there are so many different reasons that could explain such a thing, but we were thinking especially of those who end up with as children or adults, pious attempts, and locally here, how they make their way out to McQuanago, if you'll pardon rather frank speaking, despite, and this despite so many sermons, so much in the way of explanation and demonstrations. We were even wondering, are we here at St. Hugh, a kind of a a feeder station for the society? We'll bring them up and baptize them, and then you take them over at a certain point. But that would mean that our children would be destined to be fed to Moloch, the one world church, I mean, because that's where they're heading, and that cannot be. So, 30 years, why are we still here? Because we got here first? Because when we bought this church, there wasn't any Latin mass available for anyone else. 
not in town, not a proper church building, unless you wanted the dance hall. We did get here first to be the Latin Mass Chapel on the south side. Is that why we came? Is that why you came? Is that why we're still here? Now, on the south side, you have a whole gorgeous church, St. Stanislaus, available to you if you want it. And if you're willing to make the drive out of town, well, then, of course, there is still McQuanago. Why are we still here? Just to do what we've always done? for 30 years, because we've done it before, and we're just here? Why do priests come from so far away? Why do you work so hard and give so generously? Such excellent service. Yesterday, the funeral, beautifully sung, expertly served, even assistance for our guests with the parking, And that's just the latest example. There'll be another example, I'm sure, within a few weeks. The undertaker, she drove us over to St. Adelbert's. The undertaker, I had sent word, but obviously she didn't get it. She was to wear a dress. Nevertheless, she seemed to be a nice young lady. And she, she said that, well, she'd done a couple of Latin mass funerals already, over at St. Stanislaus. Why didn't she do a third yesterday? Well, a little history now. All of us here, we've all left the Novus Ordo, and each of you has your story, and you might have a date, as we have the date for when we bought this church. You might remember the occasion, perhaps, but in any case, The essential is, you left. 37 years ago, on um, April the 27th, 1980, we, or specifically Father Chikada, he's our native son, of whom we are so proud, that sometimes I wonder if he isn't here in Milwaukee, a bit of a prophet without honor in his own land. Well, 37 years ago, we were thrown out of McQuanago. Why? Because of the priesthood. The lay board had brought in an invalid priest over Easter and rejected Father Chicada's priestly authority to determine such a question. And that's how St. Hugh got started. But for years, we were in meeting rooms, of course. 34 years ago, we, there were nine American priests, We were thrown out of the St. Pius X Society. Why? Most people don't know this. Because of marriage. Yes, Archbishop Lefebvre was getting ready to join the modern church under then Cardinal Ratzinger. Wanted all of his ducks in a row and wanted us to bend to and accept the scandalous American annulments. And... uh, We could not before God. And it all started with a lady at my mission in Pierre, South Dakota. And there was a great to-do, as you can imagine. It was international. But finally, you know, at the end of the day, when all the dust settled, she confided, Father, I knew I wasn't really married to him. Well, That's how we got out of the society. The irony of it, valid priesthood. People used to worry about a valid priesthood, you know. And sometimes even, I think, the first years, they used to talk about that at St. Stanislaus. But in time, it was just finally accepted. Because after all, if that's the Catholic Church, of course, they would provide valid priests. And now, Novus Ordo Cardinals, even, are wondering about the marriage thing and worrying about it. And has anybody ever worked harder 
for the destruction of marriage, for divorce and adultery and holy communion altogether, than this so-called Pope. Anyone ever worked harder to destroy holy matrimony? So, now we're thinking, well, our children, the ones we baptized and confirmed, gave First Holy Communion to, perhaps in some cases even married, will they end up back where we left? The society is almost recognized by Rome and does recognize Rome itself, Pope Bergoglio. Will our children end up in that same Novus Ordo which we have left? Yes. Why not? All of this in some sense, finally, for them at least, not for other souls, but for them, will have been in vain. Did I ever tell you my French food fight story? You must bear with me if I do. No, it's French food, so it would be a shame to waste it. We, Father Father Sanborn, this is before he became a bishop, he and I were in France in the 1990s, and it was St. Anne's Day, and we went to visit the great shrine of St. Anne Doré, in Brittany, and afterwards <clears throat> there was an adjoining cemetery where those who fought against the French Revolution were buried. And there there was a chapel which had fallen into ruins. And after we prayed at the cemetery, we said to ourselves, well, let's chant together our vespers, we had our breviaries with us, for St. Anne's Day. And we did. It was a beautiful, memorable prayer. And towards the end, Some clergymen came in and sat in the back, the ruins. They were dressed as we, in cassock or in um, their religious habit. And it turned out there was a French called a rallier, those who had rallied back to Rome, you'd say Peter fraternity or something like that. And everyone introduced uh, himself. And then we had a little discussion. And then, of course, you you know how it goes in your family. The discussion (laughs) became an argument. And... I didn't say too much because they were going fast, and it was in French. And Father Sanborn didn't say anything at all. And finally, we two Americans were sort of on the sidelines, and the French were going at it amongst themselves, hot and heavy. And later on, I asked Father Sanborn why he didn't jump in, because his French is excellent, and his theology is very, very strong. No, he said, no, this is the French equivalent of a food fight. It serves no purpose. Why doesn't that serve any purpose? Because religion is a matter of authority and not of opinion. Man is created to serve his Lord God. The Roman centurion, and he a pagan, understood this. Remember that gospel? For I also am a man subject to authority, and I say to this one, come, and he cometh, and to that one, go, and he goeth, and to a third, do this, and he doth it. And our Lord says, I have not found so great faith in Israel. The Jews, my people, have not understood this. But do you? Is it, do you think, complicated, rather confusing, all of the different positions, groups, and societies? Is it finally a matter of opinion or which particular leader you choose to follow? No, it is not. That's the good news of today anyway. It's not. It all depends on how you phrase the question. That's the essential. It is a question of the church, and of, yes, authority. First point, the Catholic Church cannot give or teach error. She is infallible. The Pope has immediate and direct jurisdiction over each individual in the Church. He is the Vicar of Christ. He has the keys of the Kingdom of Heaven. And so, if the Novus Ordo Church In all of its glory, think of those immodestly dressed acrobats the other day. I think there were snakes involved, too, for the Feast of St. Peter's Chair in the Vatican. If that's 
the Catholic Church, if Bergoglio is truly the Pope, then the Novus Ordo Mass by Catholic doctrine must be perfectly valid and the sacraments equally valid and the moral teaching to the universal church equally valid and that means that divorce and remarriage and holy communion now go together. And you ought not to be here. Catch the next Mass as St. Stan's. But if a true Pope could teach error, it also means that the gates of hell have prevailed against the Catholic Church. Second, if this is not the Church, you must reject it because these leaders have fallen into heresy. Long ago, they lost office or they were ineligible ever to be appointed or elected to office. It's, it's a facsimile. It's not the Catholic Church. It's been talked about and predicted by mystics as well as canonists over the centuries. But if that's the case, then you must hold no communion with them because that's Antichrist. That would be a sacrilege to worship united with them. Do you see that? It would be a sacrilege to be united with Antichrist. Third possibility. Are you not sure? If you're not sure, he's Pope or nope. Canon law says, church law says, you must give him the benefit of the doubt as Pope and you must submit. So finally, friends, it's not complicated at all. It's a question of church and of authority. Let me rhyme it for you. The people at St. Stan understand. So should you at St. Hugh. But why go to McQuanago? They're a bit out of the way, and they're on their way back to the Novus Ordo we left long ago. Sometimes if it's rhymed, you can remember it the more easily. I hope you won't forget it. Pardon the length of this sermon today. Bear with me, last of all, for a practical conclusion. Ask Our Lady. Pray and beseech her in, your, in a very, very personal way. To give you strength and guidance. Ask Mary to be your all. And she will. And she'll assist you. Pray. Pray to the Holy Faith. We're privileged to have that replica here, which actually came from the reign of Leo XIII, was touched to the veil of Veronica and to so many of the relics in the Vatican. Pray to the holy face of Jesus, because it's being spit upon today, that's for sure. And you don't want to be one of the spitters, of course not. <clears throat> Ask him to settle the affairs of your household, and our Lord will, that is the promise that he makes. Remember the principles that are enunciated. These are the principles of Catholicism. They are the solution to the dilemma. They are hope, clearly explained, at such, at such length over the years, and so very often, whose rejection has now led to terrible consequences. Remember, if you can attend Pius X or the Institute, That means if you can worship with the false pope, just once, just once, that grain of incense business, then your children, children see everything. They will pick up on that. And children are sometimes ruthlessly logical. And they will say, if I may go once, why may I not go always? Indeed, that is the point. Secondly, when our children marry into the Pius X Society, we had a case of this at our church this past summer, and I assure you it was wrenchingly sad for all concerned, and there were many tears shed. It is something which cannot be accepted and celebrated 
as any other marriage would. It's a delicate point. Let me say this. Feelings are involved. It's family. How could feelings not be involved? One must tread softly. Secondly, it is indeed, at the end of the day, recognized by us as a valid marriage. That's an important point. Thirdly, we must always leave the door open for our children to return, which is why you don't want to slam it too hard. But you have to make it clear that they left. It's a question of scandal or a bad example of sacrilege to receive Holy Communion with a heretic. And it is a duty incumbent on every Catholic to profess the faith at certain times in his life. And this is so, such an occasion, certainly, to refuse any kind of a deadly compromise rather than to betray our faith. Our children, we should think enough of them, have a right to this. So it should be clear that such a marriage really is a sorrow. It really is a shame. It's not just one more choice. It is a matter for tears. I'll shed them if you won't. They should understand, but they don't. Now, if you say that you still don't understand, stay and pray with the blind man today, Lord, that I may see, simple as that, as the twelve did. It took them a while too, you know. I wish to give the last word today, however, of all things, to a Mohammedan woman who understands what many Catholics have forgotten. I saw this on the internet the other day. Religion, she said, is to serve God. This Pope makes it to serve man. Who do you serve? God or man or yourself? That, that would make it a self-serve religion. Understand at least this, Lord, that I may see. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.